The Christmas Saurus by Tom Fletcher. Chapter 6 Magnificently Magical Flying Reindeer. For the Christmas Saurus, growing up in the North Pole was awesomely fun. He would watch the polar bears play ping pong, he'd watch the forest fairies fish for fidgets, little swimming insects that fairies eat as snacks, they taste like marmite. He'd watch the snowman ice skate and the walruses waltz. But of course, he spent most of his time with Santa and the eight elves who'd found him. Snozzletrump, Specklehump, Sparklefoot, Sugarsnout, Starlump, Spudcheeks, Snowcrumb and Sprout. They were like family to the Christmasaurus. As the Christmasaurus grew, they looked after him, fed him his daily serving of 42 mince pies, washed him with the happy tears of fairies, fairy liquid, walked him three times an hour and did pretty much everything that your mum and dad do for you. Those eight little elves, as well as Santa himself, were the closest thing to parents that the Christmas Saurus had, and he loved them all very much indeed. But even though Santa and the elves were a wonderful family, the Christmas Saurus was sometimes very, very lonely. He felt lonely because he was different. He was the only dinosaur in the world. There were lots of elves, lots of polar bears, lots of walruses and whales and snowmen and forest fairies. But there was only one of him, and that made him rather sad. Whenever the Christmas Saurus felt sad, he knew there was only one thing that would cheer him up. He would go and visit his favourite of all the creatures in the North Pole, Santa's magnificently magical flying reindeer. Santa's magnificently magical flying reindeer were the most wondrous creatures you could possibly imagine. Clear your head for a moment and I'll help you picture one. Imagine a pair of soft, velvety antlers, now double their softness. Imagine a pair of deep, twinkling black eyes, like a starry sky. Imagine a dark brown fur coat speckled with jingly jangly bells. Imagine four bright golden hooves that seem to glow from within. Now imagine this creature flying around 10 metres above your head and voila! There you have one of Santa's magnificently magical flying reindeer. The Christmas Saurus thought they were magnificent too. He would spend hour after hour just watching them fly about in circles high over his head. You see, the Christmas Saurus had a secret. He wished that he could fly up there with them. The Christmas Saurus thought that if only he could fly like a reindeer, then maybe he wouldn't be so different. Perhaps one day he might even be able to pull Santa's sleigh. Well, once that idea had found its way into the Christmasaurus's head, there wasn't a fidget's chance in the North Pole of getting it out. Pulling Santa's sleigh on Christmas Eve with the magnificently magical flying reindeer became the Christmasaurus's life ambition. And from that moment on, it was all he ever thought about. If a reindeer can fly, then so can I, he would think to himself in his dinosaur thoughts. He promised himself that he would do whatever it took to get his scaly dinosaur tail off the ground and into the air with the reindeer. So the Christmas Saurus started eating the same food as the reindeer and drinking the same drinks as the reindeer. He even started sleeping in the stables with the reindeer in the hope that whatever magic made them fly might rub off on him. But you see, it wasn't as simple as that. There was a special reason why the reindeer could fly and it wasn't in their food or their drink. It wasn't the way they slept. And it wasn't to do with their great velvety antlers or glowing golden hooves. There was a deeper magic at work. And it was the strongest, oldest kind of magic that exists. All around the world, there are millions of children, just like you, who know all about Santa's flying reindeer. They don't just think Santa's reindeer can fly. Those millions of children believe that Santa's reindeer can fly. They believe beyond any shadow of doubt and belief is the most powerful magic there is. Believing is the only magic that makes the utterly impossible completely possible and the undoubtedly undoable undeniably doable. And of all the different kinds of belief there are, the belief of a child is by far the most unbelievably unstoppable. If all the children in the world suddenly stopped believing in Santa and flying reindeer and all the wonderful things in the North Pole, then all of those fantastic things would pop out of existence like the bursting of a bubble. That's why believing is so important. It's what keeps magic alive. And so you can see the problem. Not one child on planet Earth knew that there was a dinosaur living in the North Pole. 
Not one child believed that a dinosaur could fly, so it was hopeless. No matter how fast the Christmasaurus ran, no matter how high the Christmasaurus jumped, without the belief of a child, he just couldn't fly. On the 1st of December, the Christmasaurus was walking alone around the outskirts of the elf city with his head hanging low. The North Pole was getting into the full swing of Christmas and the Christmasaurus saw a great snowman snowball fight in the distant snowfields. But he was terrible at throwing snowballs with his tiny dinosaur arms. The elves had erected the most enormous Christmas tree in the centre of the ranch, but he was completely rubbish at decorating Christmas trees. The tinsel always got caught up in his claws and tail. He couldn't swim like the narwhals or wrap presents like the fairies. In fact, when he thought about it, the Christmas saw us realise just how different he was. He really didn't fit in at all. The Christmas saw us let out a very low, very sad roar, leaving long, lonely claw prints behind him, his scaly tail dragging in the snow. He stared out into the distance over the great North Pole Mountains, and as the northern lights splashed their greens and blues across the sky, he wondered if there was anybody else in the whole wide world who was like him. Was there anyone out there who knew what it was like to be different? What the Christmas saurus didn't know was there was someone, a long way away, who was looking up at the sky just like him, wondering the exact same thing. Someone who knew just what it was like to be different. You've already met him, of course. That someone was a small boy called William Trundle.